Are you curious about pinata alcohol inks? And have you wondered how to make these pretty little rosette embellishments? Well, keep watching and find out about both. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. If you'd like some fun mixed into the creativity, tips, tricks, and new ideas you're looking for, subscribe to this channel for all that and more, like discoveries. For example, I get asked all the time about products that I use and why. So what I'm going to start doing is periodically highlighting different products as I use them so that you can hopefully learn about products you may not know or get information on ones you'd like to know better. I'll share my reasons for choosing one thing over another and provide you with accurate, up-to-date information. So, let's start with alcohol inks, especially for those of you just starting to acquire them. There are definitely a few companies that make alcohol inks, but probably my favorite is the Pinata line by Jacquard. When choosing any kind of color to work with, whether it's paint like acrylics or oils or colored pencils or pastels or inks, one of the things you really want to look for are ones that are as light fast as possible, meaning they won't change over time or fade when exposed to light, primarily UV light or sunlight. Alcohol inks in general, by virtue of being dye-based, tend not to be as light fast as some other mediums might be, but Jacquard has gone out of their way to use the most light fast colorants possible for a rich, stable line of inks. Now, if you're just starting to accumulate your inks, I've mentioned the Exciter Pack before, but thought you might like to see one in detail. It is the best alcohol ink value I've ever found. Now, for my channel, it's really important to me to recommend things to you that are either good and affordable or so excellent that paying a bit more is worth it. In this case, these are both excellent and a great value. Bonus! In this Exciter pack, you get nine colors. Sunbright Yellow, Calabasa Orange, Senorita Magenta, Baja Blue, Rainforest Green, Passion Purple, Blanco Blanco or White, Mantilla Black, and Rich Gold. And with these, you can make pretty much any color you need. And the bottles that come with the Exciter Pack are the full half ounce bottles that you would get if you were to buy the colors individually. It's just that you get a really good savings by getting nine in one shot. In general, alcohol ink goes a long way. So this set is likely to last you quite a long time. But if you start to see that there's a color that you use a lot of and would be replacing often, one of the things that I love about Jacquard too is that they sell their inks in four ounce bottles as well. So like for me, I use a lot of white. So I love that I'm able to get it in a four ounce bottle. So that is a tour of the Exciter Pack. Now let's use this. Since I'm going to start using a lot of yellow as a background color for my wispy ethereal projects, I might as well mix up a small bottle of it, of the thinned alcohol ink and alcohol mix, like I have with other colors in the past. I never had made up a yellow, so I figured since I'm going to do it now, you might want to see how I do it. It's really simple. Now this bottle will hold one ounce, which will go a very long way. But since I don't know how much alcohol I'm going to need to thin this color, I don't, if you saw my last video for the magenta, 
I used an entire ounce of alcohol with only a few drops of the magenta, and that was sufficient. So since I don't know how strong the yellow might be, what I'm going to do is only fill half the bottle with a few drops of, al of alcohol ink. That way, if I need more alcohol, I still have room to add alcohol. And if I find that it's too weak, I can always add more alcohol ink too. Okay, so I filled the bottle halfway up with alcohol. So I'm using 91% alcohol. Anything over 90% will do well. And I'm going to add, let's say five drops of alcohol ink. And looking at it, I can already tell that I can use a lot more. Okay, so there are 20 drops in there. So we'll play with that and see what happens. And if for some reason I find that I need more, I can always add more. Now the reason that I went with straight alcohol as my thinning agent is because I'm going to be working on Duralar. And Duralar has a nice surface that accepts inks and pencil and pens and all that very easily. But if I was going to be working on glass or ceramic tile that doesn't accept those things and hold on to those things well, then what I would have done is mix 50% Claro extender and then 50% alcohol and then I would have added my alcohol ink. And Claro extender is by Jacquard. It comes in a one ounce bottle or a four ounce bottle and it thins alcohol ink and extends the drying time while maintaining the sheen and the binding ability. So it'll hold on to a slick surface like glass or ceramic tile. But again, Duralar doesn't require that, so just straight alcohol was fine to use. Now I'm going to be working on matte Duralar. 005 two-sided matte film. It comes in packs of 25 sheets that are 9 by 12. Depending on where you get it, your packaging may look different. It might look more like this, but it's the same. Duralar also comes in clear. I'll show you that in another video. Today we're going to be using the frosted translucent looking version, the matte version. Now I've cut myself a piece of Duralar that I will tape to the glass platform that I've made myself. And I'm gonna do that so that when I go to blow with my blow dryer, I don't have to worry about this possibly blowing off the surface. And also I can make myself a nice frame with a scotch tape. Now I get asked about this platform quite a bit, so I'm gonna show you what it is. All this is, is the glass from a cheap dollar store frame. I took the glass out, I put scotch tape around the edges because the edges tend to be a little sharp. And the four feet are just the inner core left over after you use up a roll of clear tape. I just taped them underneath and now I have myself a nice little platform. Now, if you're going to make one of these that's larger, like let's say 11 by 14, my dollar store has frames up to that size then I would double up on the glass because it can be a little flimsy. Now, the reason I prefer glass over, let's say, a piece of acrylic, acrylic can flex a little too much and sometimes the ink can run to the center or if it flexes the other way, the ink will run that way. Where glass, even though it can flex too, it doesn't stay flexed. It'll bounce back and level itself out. So I prefer this. So there you have it, the secret of my fancy looking platform. <laughs> the Duralar is now taped to the platform and I made a border with the tape so that when I'm done, I peel off the tape and I have a nice frame around my piece. Then I swatch the colors from the Exciter pack and I also thought you might want to see what the colors look like. At the top, it's them in their full strength. And then this is if I thin them down. And then the last color there, that's the gold. It's super shiny and really very, very golden. So I've decided to use the magenta for the rosettes. Since I'll be using it on a predominantly yellow background that I'm going to make, I'll get 
red, orange, and even some magenta roses if I leave some bare spots on the background exposed. Time to see how the yellow fares. As far as strength goes, I think it's pretty good. Now, I want to have a little bit of a gold to the yellow as well. So what I'm going to do for that is add just a little tiny little bit of the magenta. And then add some alcohol, a little more yellow in that area, and then work that color in. So what I did was move back and forth. I never let the pink settle into itself. I'm going to do a little bit more of that in some other areas too. A lot of alcohol. Very small amounts of the pink. So the secret to this, to getting this technique to really work its best, is to keep moving all the time. The more you do that, the more of an ethereal look you'll get, and the more of these sort of wispy, kind of fabric-y lines you'll get as well. Now to make the rosettes, I use three things. A ball stylus, a fine point paintbrush, or an alcohol ink marker. Any of these will work to make the rosettes, but I'm gonna show you first how to do it with these two because we're gonna be working with the alcohol ink that we have. When you get one of these, they usually come in a set of three to five, and the little balls on the ends are all different sizes. And you'll decide which size you want to use based on the size of rosette you want to make. What I'm going to do now is I'm taking my thinned Senorita Magenta and I'm just going to pour myself a little puddle in this flattened bottle cap. And I'm just going to dunk this and get it nice and wet. And I'm going to just set it down here and start to swirl. And I'm going to swirl for a little bit, come to the middle and wait. Let it dry a little bit. Swirl a little bit more, come to the middle and wait. Let it dry, do it again, wait. And what happens when you're waiting is that your little ring that you made is drying. And you know how alcohol ink makes those little borders? You're getting that little border to form. And then you have a little puddle that is sort of sucked onto the end of your stylus. And that little puddle that forms in the middle sort of holds on by capillary action to the end of the ball. And that is what's sort of like the trick to this. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to swirl. I'm not making a real circle, sort of like a square. Come around, come to the middle, wait. Let some drying happen. Do it again. Come to the middle, let it dry so that your next ring forms, and then play a little again. Let another ring form and dry. And when you go to lift it, let, let's say I lifted it now, I would have sort of a really dark spot like what happened here because I still have that little puddle underneath the ball and it wants to dry, I'm preventing it from spreading and doing its thing because I'm leaving the ball in it. So the liquid is just holding on. But by moving it around, I am in effect creating the little rosette. And I can come in and make an overlapping one. And now I'm picking up some of the yellow. So this one, the color will be a little bit different. Now, when you go to make a bigger one, you may need to reload. You may not have enough ink. So sometimes I come back in and pick up some more. So the trick is to make your little ringlet, let it dry, wait, and then move around. And if you want, your rosettes to be more intense, brighter, 
then add more actual alcohol ink to your mix. And sometimes you'll get impatient and you'll lift. And then if you lift and you have this much of a dot left, then it's going to spread and sort of wipe out the last couple of rings you made. So you may end up having to come back in and almost rework that area. And if I need to make a little bit of a center, then I can just switch over to a smaller ball. This is the ball I was working with before. Now I'm going to switch over to a smaller ball so that I can sort of work the center. Same principle. Move around, stop, move around, let it dry, stop. Now you can see how completely different this one is in color to the others because I added pure ink to the mix. Now, with a paintbrush, I can do basically the same thing. Let's make one here. And I'm going to swirl, come to the center, and stop. It doesn't work exactly the same, but it does let you push the ink in more organic ways, I guess, which can be fun. So you'll play and decide which tool works best for you. And then if I use a marker, some markers have what's called a brush nib, like this one where it's flexible. And those tend to be easier to use for something like this, as opposed to this marker that has more of a stiff nib, kind of like what you're used to, like on a Sharpie, for example. With a brush tip, it because it flexes, it tends to be a little easier to use. And again, with this is a really pale color, so sometimes what I do with a pale color is sort of clean off an area to make a rosette, and I can actually pick up color with it. And with this, you're not sort of forming a puddle as much because the marker doesn't keep a puddle underneath. You are creating your lines. You can pick up the marker at any time because there's no wet spot in the middle. And then load it up, push around, pick up, and kind of do that sort of thing. So the marker has a completely different quality to it because it isn't keeping the area wet. Now, another advantage of the marker, because this is a really light color, is I can come in and sort of wipe this. It gives me a lot of color to play with. And the marker, just the tip of the marker, is sort of picking up that color. And I can push it around and work it all I want and decide what size flower I want. Let's make a really big one. And I'm just going to swirl around. And then I get that. So the goal there was to have some dark ink down on your surface and then use a lighter marker to push it around. This is one of the beauties of alcohol ink markers is it the ink won't run up all the way into the marker. It will stay just on the tip. And then when I'm done, if I want to discharge the extra color, if I just sort of wipe, eventually I'll go back down to the real natural color of the marker. So those are the ways that I make little rosettes. Now, let us make some leaves. Now for the leaves, you can also use the three different tools. Since I have yellow down, I can put some blue in my little cap here, and I'm going to use the small end. Now when it comes to making leaves, using the ball stylus can be tricky. Your alcohol ink is going to want to bloom. So you've got to sort of gauge how much alcohol to 
have on your little tip. It's really hard to get nice points with the ball stylus. Now these are pale. I'm going to add a little bit of the rainforest green. Now this, again, is pure alcohol ink. So it's going to be rather dark. I don't want it to be as wet as when I'm making a rosette because I'm not I'm not working a large area. The easier solution is usually using a brush. All I've done with my brushes is sort of labeled them for myself so that I don't pick up a brush that's been in green ink and then dunk it in red ink so that way I know that I've dedicated this brush to always having green ink so I don't have to worry about contamination. Now, when using the brush, the goal is to get the brush to be as dry as possible. If it's too wet, you have the same problem you had with the stylus. The ink will bloom and spread, and you won't get the nice shape you're after. Because when you're making a leaf, you're not going for a big round blob like you are with the flower. You kind of want a more controlled shape. And then the same way that we did this rosette with the marker, we can use a light colored marker and start out making yourself a spot for your leaf. Add some undiluted ink let the marker pick it up, and then you can push it around. Because the marker is still loaded with a little bit of that other color, I can get sort of variations on the green. I'm just going to keep playing make another one since the marker is still full of that color. And then this way you don't have to have 20 billion markers. You can have just a couple and let your alcohol links be sort of the colors for you. If there are others that I don't like as much, I can go in and fix them up after the fact, too. Well, let's do that with the ball. Let's make this one brighter. And then there'll be a point at which now it's going to be about composition. Where do you want your little rosettes? Do you want them clustered all in one area? Do you want them scattered? I like them scattered, personally. And I also like them to have different shades. So now what I'd like for you guys to do is to tell me what sorts of products are you curious about? What are you thinking of buying but you're not sure? And what techniques are you hoping to learn? Let me know all that sort of stuff in the comments. So what I'm going for is sort of a swath of roses that goes like this. That's the goal. And they'll be all different sizes, all different shades of pink and red. And you'll notice I'm switching up working with the marker, the brush, the stylus, so that the flowers all look a little different. But you may want all your flowers to have the similar feel, in which case stick to one tool. And if you're working on glass rather than something like Dorlar, Again, the same as you would have done for the background color. You are best off mixing your alcohol ink with the Claro extender. It'll give it a better binding ability to whatever glass surface or ceramic tile surface you're working on. I'm thinking that's enough roses. So now I'm just going to finish up with foliage and this piece will be done. Here and there making the suggestion 
of a vine type thing. That's, that's about as much of a plant as I have because I really, the goal was to show you how to make some roses <laughs> and put some roses down on this thing. And now I'm like, okay, well, I guess I should turn it into something. And I don't have a real plan, so I never really have a plan for <laughs> I make a video. I probably should, but my, my plan is to show you a technique, and then, then I, all of a sudden I'm in the middle of a piece, and I'm like, well, uh, what are we going to make it be? <laughs> so that, you know, since we're at it, let's try to make something pretty. <laughs> so that, so that in the end, when I take the last shot, it looks like something. I know one day, honestly, I'm going to come into one of these tutorials with an absolute plan. This is not that day. <laughs> and what I love about Alcohol Ink is its ability to push itself out of the way. So periodically I want a leaf to overlap a flower and I don't have to do anything to the flower to make it accept the leaf. So let's zoom in. And let's say I want a leaf overlapping this flower. All I have to do is literally draw the ink into it and it'll cut a path into the flower for me. And now the leaf is overlapping the flower and I didn't have to do anything to the flower really to let the green come here. The green made a path for itself. And I'm doing that in some spots so that it kind of has more of like a 3D-ish look and it's not one flat plane. Now I'm using the marker to get my last little vine pieces connected. This is much faster. But I hope that you've gotten a sense that you can do lots of things with different tools. You can make whatever you have on hand work. I'm going to call this done and take the tape off and see what we've got. Give this a thumbs up to let me know to make more. I hope that you've gotten a good feel of how to make these little rosettes and a good feel for the Exciter Pack. What I also hope you got out of this is that many different things can be used to make art. You don't have to have every single tool. Different things you already have can help you make beautiful pieces. Try Q-tips, eyeshadow applicators, um, the little tiny dental applicators, even tightly rolled up tissue paper. Alcohol inks are wonderfully forgiving, so there's just no reason not to jump in and at least try them. I think you'll really enjoy them if you've been kind of hesitant or afraid. Links to everything I used are in the description box below the video. I think this turned out kind of pretty. For not having had a plan, <laughs> I'm kind of happy with this. I hope you are too. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe for more tips, tutorials, ideas, and fun. Let's have fun. <laughs> Remember to let your creative nature shine. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye now.